This hour, the podcast is exclusively sponsored by my good friends at Advantage Gold. Advantage Gold is a five-star rated gold company with one-of-a-kind customer service. And when it comes to gold and precious metals, Advantage Gold is the only company I'll work with. Call Advantage Gold today and make sure you let them know that Mark Levin sent you. And now, let's begin. He's here. He's here. Now, broadcasting them from the underground command post, deep in the bowels of a hidden bunker, somewhere under the brick and steel of a nondescript building, we've once again made contact with our leader, Mark Levin. Mark Levin here, our number, 877-381-3811, 877-381-3811. There's a breaking story this evening, which kind of illustrates and underscores what I've been talking about, the violent terrorist mindset in the United States, with open borders, and the Democrat Party embracing, if not promoting, but certainly not condemning, the Islamist mindset that is spreading like wildfire in this country from one no-go zone to another. We played the memory video, audio for you folks, where an Islamist imam and some other rat fink We're talking about destroying America, that America needed to be destroyed. And they didn't quote Martin Luther King. They quoted Malcolm X. People come into this country, you have a first generation and a second generation in the case of those two people. And they come here to hate it. I've also spent months trying to explain that this ideology is not just about slaughtering the Jews, although that certainly is a priority. It's about destroying us, because we're the most powerful force, and not just militarily, but morally and constitutionally, that stands against these Islamists. So what happened today? From Fox, FBI arrests Idaho 18-year-old for violent plot to attack churches on behalf of ISIS, Justice Department says. They arrested An 18-year-old in Idaho, after uncovering his truly horrific and violent plot to attack churches in Coeur d'Alene this past week on behalf of ISIS, Alexander Mercurio is now facing a federal charge of attempting to provide material support or resources to a designated foreign terrorist organization after the FBI says he devised a plan to, quote, incapacitate his father, restrain him using handcuffs, steal his firearms to use for maximum casualties, quote, unquote, in an attack he had been planning to carry out in northern Idaho, the resort city in northern Idaho, Coeur d'Alene, on Sunday. The defendant allegedly pledged loyalty to ISIS, sought to attack people attending churches in Idaho, a truly horrific plan which was detected and thwarted by the FBI's Joint Terrorism Task Force. FBI Director Christopher Wray said in a statement, the Department of Justice will continue to relentlessly pursue, disrupt, and hold accountable those who would commit acts of terrorism against the United States. And who are they? 
I don't think you'll find them in the Catholic Church. I don't think you'll find them in a temple, Jewish temple. Who are they? In a complaint, a criminal complaint, the FBI says the investigation began when Mercurio, who's a resident of Coeur quote, reached out to confidential human sources online and indicated his support for ISIS and terrorist organizations. Mercurio spread ISIS propaganda online and solicited ISIS's involvement in and approval of his propaganda efforts discussing travel from the United States to join ISIS and considered and planned ways to support ISIS financially. His attack plan involved using flame-covered weapons, explosives, knives, a machete, a pipe, and ultimately firearms. His plan grew more precise as he eventually identified the specific church and date on which he planned to attack. And they grabbed him the day before he was going to attack. You better get used to this. I don't mean used to terrorism. I mean used to these, these threats. And the FBI is not going to be able to stop all of them. You can't play defense. We have an immigration system. Check that. We don't have an immigration system. Any would-be terrorists from the Middle East can slip right into this country, and I guarantee you they have. We have Soros prosecutors in this country that will not prosecute individuals. Individuals who are recidivists, who even do violent crimes. You have coddling judges. But worst off, you have a president of the United States who won't stand up to anti-Semitism. Instead, he spreads it with his blood libels day in and day out against the state of Israel. Hamas doesn't fear Biden. Iran doesn't fear Biden. Hezbollah, Houthis, they all laugh. I mean, he's insisting that Israel provide more food, more medicine to people in Gaza, even though Israel is trying to defeat their leadership. And that leadership didn't shoot its way to the top. That leadership was elected. And then they shot their, their way to the top to stay there. In fact, the so-called peaceful Palestinians, Arafat's PLO, they're talking about a united government. If they can just get their hands on Judea and Samaria. Where Hamas would have cabinet positions. Oh, I bet you didn't know that. So in the middle of all this, Joe Biden is actually reaching out to Dearbornistan because he doesn't want to lose the vote of the Rashida Talib constituency. Of course, the media are not going to report this. They'll attack anybody who exposes it. They can attack all they want. The truth is the truth. They have no influence over people like me. Matter of fact, the more they attack, the more I push back. But you are going to see much more of this. Because of the rhetoric Biden uses. Because it's now okay. Look, the heads of Hamas, memory.org, interpreted what they said. They are celebrating the position of the Democrat Party and the American media and the Islamists and Marxists in the streets. They're celebrating it. It's open season now. It's open season on the United States. It's open season on Israel. Open season. Dear Bornistan, that's what I've been calling it because that's what it is. The propaganda that Joe Biden uses against the state of Israel, could be used by skinheads, Klansmen, neo-Nazis, Islamists, his blood libels. And of course, Antony Blinken, whose family is bought and paid for by George Soros, for him this is ideological. He doesn't really care. Everybody said to me, he's, he's actually Jewish, you know. No, his mother was Jewish. Which is fine, that's great. But he has no connection to the Jewish faith. Well, his grandparents, or his great-grandparents, or one or more of them, had suffered through the Holocaust. But that's not him. He hasn't suffered through anything. And so why is he playing footsie with Iran? That wants to create another Holocaust. Why is he there helping to fund Iran? I don't give a damn about his lineage. In fact, that underscores what a complete insane buffoon this ideologue is. Blinken's a traitor. He was involved in getting 
in the first place in the Obama administration, his deputy secretary of state, he was involved in that deal intimately that would ensure that Iran would have nuclear weapons. Now he's involved as secretary of state to ensure that Iran has nuclear weapons. There's not a single media outlet in America that has asked Blinken or Biden, what are you doing about the nukes that Iran is developing? Even on these surrogate sites, Mediaite, Media Matters, these Soros-related or Dan Abrams-related sites, not a word, nothing. And so here's a case where this guy was found out and nabbed, and there'll be many cases where nobody's found out and not nabbed, and the horror will be done. And even today, Joe Biden has said nothing. He said nothing in when the comments were made in Dear Bornistan, nothing. He said nothing when those Ivy, Poison Ivy League presidents or those universities said what they said. He said nothing. No speech to the nation, no concern at all. I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. Our once mighty dollars under siege from runaway inflation. For those still working, your paychecks buy less while costs for gas, food, cars, utilities skyrocket thanks to inflation. That's why I'm urging all my listeners to register for the upcoming Gold and Silver Summit hosted by our friends at Advantage Gold. It's a fantastic seminar. They'll teach you how to take steps to help guard your wealth from inflation using asset diversification into physical precious metals. Gold and silver hold intrinsic value that should remain untouched by government manipulation. Folks, don't wait for the Fed's reckless policies to completely devalue the dollar and steal your life savings. Call now while free registration is open. I'm telling you, this is a fantastic seminar. Call 800-900-8000 right now. The Gold and Silver Summit could provide the vital insights we need to protect our families. 800-900-8000. Tell them Mark Levin sent you. Performance may vary. Past performance is not indicative of future results. Always consult your financial and tax professionals. I want you to listen to what Joe Biden's saying on the campaign trail, such as it is. In an interview today with Univision, Enrique Acevedo. And this is a set-up question by a leftist. Cut one, go. What, in your view, constitutes the primary threat to freedom and democracy at home? Gee, now you know that was fed. Good job, Enrique Acevedo. Come off like a clown. What a tough question. That's why Biden does interviews with left-wing kooks. Go ahead. Donald Trump. Seriously. Donald Trump talk uses phrases like you're going to use or eviscerate the Constitution. He's going to be a dictator on day one. The idea that he would sit in the office, and I'll show you before you leave, off the Oval Office, and watch for hours the attack on the Capitol and the destruction and the mayhem and the people were killed people were not killed a peaceful protester was murdered police officers were not killed you're such a stinking rotten liar the idea that you would sit on your fat ass in the oval office and watch as fentanyl comes over the border And are given reports of women being sold into sex slavery, little children being sold into sex slavery. You want to know where violence is? The inhumanity on the border. Like he really cares, this this POS. Like he really cares. It's amazing. Number of people who've died on the border. But they have to make stuff up. Like police were killed that day. No, they weren't. No, they weren't. Go ahead. And call them political heroes? Call them patriots? Call them political heroes? You're giving aid and comfort to Iran. That's what I mean. The guy gave the Iranians, who gave the Hamas the money to attack the Israelis on October 7th. This isn't a real reporter. Enrique Acevedo. I mean, the comeback is, well, President Biden, you're funding Iran to this day. They kill gay people, they kill non-believers, they kill people they think are threatening the 
the regime, thousands and thousands, they're responsible for October 7. You funded them. What do you say to that? Not a word. And you would think Univision would be concerned about all the slavery that's taking place on the southern border. The greatest amount of slavery since the end of the Civil War. And Biden was on the wrong side of segregation and racism when he came to the Senate. I mean, there's so many ways to question this guy. But Aleki Acevedo, he's not there to question. He's there to be a foil. Go ahead. He gets elected, he's going to free them all because they're being held illegally. Well, your party freed the FALN terrorists. Your party freed those who lived the Puerto Rican independence movement terrorists who shot in the House of Representatives several members of the House, one in the chest. Your party did that. Your party nominated for president who won twice an individual who was best friends with domestic terrorists. Go ahead. It's just, uh, and think of the things he says. Look at the way he... When he talks about... All right, that's enough. Well, Good, guys. That's what he's going to run on? Let's go to cut three. Go. Look, I'm a capitalist, but I want to No, you're make not sure. a capitalist. You're just an ass. You're not a capitalist. Stop saying you're a capitalist. You're the worst socialist in the office of the president, even worse than Franklin Roosevelt. So what do you mean you're a capitalist? I'm a capitalist, but, but, but. So he's, I'm a capitalist, but. He spent his entire life pushing economic socialism, centralization of power, redistribution of wealth. How's that a capitalist? Go ahead. Look, I'm a capitalist, but I want to make sure that, you know, if you make a million bucks, great. Just start paying your fair share in taxes. This is a guy who set up two S corporations so he wouldn't have to pay the Obamacare tax. And he and Jill flowed, I think, like $1.9 million, give or take, through these two S corporations to avoid his taxes. I pay an enormous amount in federal income taxes and state, partially in Virginia. Enormous. I don't have any S corporations. I don't have any overseas accounts. I don't have any phony corporations to run money through. My wife and I don't, we don't live that way. We don't work that way. The issue isn't whether you pay your fair amount in taxes. The issue is that money all goes to the federal government. And Joe Biden hands it out to his buddies like lollipops, like the student loan forgiveness. That's unconstitutional. He's defying defying the Constitution, and we're paying for it. And Biden's view is good. You need to pay more taxes. More taxes for climate change. More taxes to subsidize electric vehicles against your own interests. More taxes to flow in the radical left-wing groups. More taxes. That's not the purpose of taxation. The purpose of taxation is to pay for constitutionally legitimate government activity. He's not a capitalist. He's never been a capitalist. He's been on the dole his entire life. Whether it's us paying his salary and his health care and all the rest, or the communist Chinese paying it at the Biden Penn Center, you know. You only take the best at the Biden Penn Center. I'll be right back. Attention, fellow Americans, Mark Levin here with a warning and a solution. I feel like our country is being destroyed by out-of-control spending and debt thanks to Biden and the American Marxists. And your hard-earned savings and retirement could be at risk from their socialist schemes. That's why you should consider Advantage Gold the best of the best, a U.S.-based company that specializes in helping everyday Americans protect their wealth. They have a simple solution to help you even potentially grow your wealth despite the attacks from Washington. I urge you to register for their upcoming Gold and Silver Summit. It's fabulous. A free online event where you'll learn tips to help safeguard your finances by diversifying into physical precious metals. Call 800-900-8000. Call them right now to sign up securely for this pivotal summit. It is crucial. Tell them Mark Levin sent you for a special bonus. Call 800-900-8000 right now. Performance may vary. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. You should always consult your financial and tax professional. 
This is the nation's town hall meeting, and you can join in at 877-381-3811. Joe Biden, a nasty man who should never have been anywhere close to the Oval Office. Again today, listen to this one. Cut four, go. My predecessor and his MAGA friends want to, I love the phrase, the, the language he used, they want to terminate the Affordable Care Act. Terminate. Well, guess what? Killing millions of Americans, take them off of health care. You listen to this? Let's just stop a second. Killing millions of Americans. Donald Trump is not a philosophical conservative. When it comes to Medicare and Social Security, when it comes to certain of these programs, health care and so forth, he's actually relatively liberal on these programs. And so, it's Joe Biden that has the history. And I've played the audio for you repeatedly. I've played it, the video on Fox and on The Blaze. Who's gone after Social Security in 1984, 1987, 2004, 2007? Four times, at least. Is Obamacare's God's gift? Most people with Obamacare don't, don't, don't care for it that much. Is that the only way to go? No, there's options. There are other ways to address this. So his view is, if you don't support Obamacare, you're going to kill millions of people? Now, they say we should elevate our political speech. Is this elevating it? So, so far, Donald Trump is the greatest threat to democracy. Donald Trump's going to kill millions of people who are on Obamacare. Donald Trump's going to destroy Social Security and Medicare. Listen to this one. Cut five, Mr. Producer. Go. When it comes to Social Security and Medicare, my predecessor recently said, quote, there's a lot you can do in terms of cutting. What he's talking about is fraud. He's never supported cutting it. So Biden is lying again. It's Biden. That's the history of Biden in the Senate. Who over and over again talked about that. But listen, listen to his his propaganda. Go ahead. Love it. Right on cue, House Republicans released their budget that would raise the retirement age of Social Security. Now, what it would do is a proposal that's been on the table for three or four decades. That is, for people who are, say, 40, 45 years old, they'd raise the retirement age by a couple of years because Social Security is going broke. Trump has not endorsed that. I endorse that. Would you rather be eligible for Social Security at 67 rather than 65 or not have any Social Security whatsoever? That's the issue. But you can't have a rational debate when you have a guy like Biden. Biden can only win. Listen. So just listen to this. So Trump wants to destroy democracy. (coughs) Trump wants 2 million people to die. Trump wants people on Social Security to go without. He wants people on Medicare to go without. Where is this coming from? It's coming from a man who has used these tactics to character assassinate people before as chairman of the Foreign Affairs Committee, as chairman of the Senate Judiciary Committee. Use these tactics against Robert Bork, against Clarence Thomas. He used these tactics against all kinds of nominees for district and circuit judgeships. He uses these tactics when he runs for office, or did, in the Senate. And the media will let him get away with it. He talks about the greatest debt in American history due to Trump because of tax cuts. The problem are not tax cuts, the problem is spending. Everybody said this. Even some people on the left have said this. But he doesn't care. He's got Pinocchios coming out of his ass from these fact checkers who say, no, 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 that's not what happened. He doesn't care. And this is how he hopes to win. And you might. Because an appellate judge today ruled that the case brought by Alvin Bragg in front of a corrupt judge, intellectually, politically corrupt, I'm not saying he's taking money, I'm saying he's a hack, 
a case that never should have been brought, a case that was turned down three times by the Federal Election Commission, the U.S. Attorney's Office, and his own office, that it should go forward. April 15th. April 15th. That's six days from today. Six days. President Trump will be brought before a phony judge, phony court, phony prosecutor, phony jury. They'll go through the motions. 34 counts, I believe it is. 34. All they need is one. Jury of your peers, not a jury of left-wing Democrats in Manhattan. No, it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. And of course, they'll have a right to appeal. But it'll be too late between the media and the way Biden talks and the rest. And they know this. They know this. If I had to sum up Joe Biden, I'd say he's a lowlife. That's basically what he is. He's a lowlife. And I hope everybody regurgitates exactly what I said. Friend and foe alike. He's always been a lowlife. Always been a lowlife. Anything for power. He's no real world experience. He gets elected when he's 29. Sworn in when he's 30. He's immediately part of the segregationist racist wing of the Democrat Party. Now he's part of the Marxist fascistic wing of the Democrat Party. Not all that far apart if you give it really serious thought. So he's going to run on lies. Real terrorists have been pardoned by Jimmy Carter, by Bill Clinton, by Barack Obama. Real terrorists. Barack Obama, as I said, was best friends with a domestic terrorist. Two of them. Actually, three of them. Three of them. Joe Biden is the biggest slaver in American history. That's what I would run on a commercial. 100,000 Americans dead, and he pretends he cares about civilians. Just not American civilians, just not Haitian civilians, just not only civilians he cares about, oddly enough, are those who voted for a terrorist regime. And after attack after attack, murder after murder after murder, Israel finally said, we've had enough, we're taking you out. Biden says, no, you're not. In fact, we're going to build a port for the Gazans. And we're going to destroy our 76-year relationship with Israel. Because I need those votes out of Michigan. Look, I'm buying votes left and right with student loan forgiveness, even though it violates the Constitution and a Supreme Court order, a direct order that said no. I will continue to push to topple the state of Israel. I will continue to fund Iran to attack Israel and the United States, if I have to. I will continue to keep the border open so we can keep importing future Democrats. Let's be honest. That's what's going on here. And what do I give a damn about Israel? What do I give a damn about the southern border? All that matters is my election. Power. That's all I've ever done. That's all I've ever pursued in my entire life. I'm speaking as Biden. Election after election. Power after power. That's what he's doing. Look at the things he says about Trump. He doesn't even call out the Islamists from the other day. Not a word. Nothing. The presidents of these universities, not a word. Nothing. Zero. The little crystal knocks going on all over the country. Not a word. Nothing. No go zones now popping up across them. Not a word. Nothing. Zero. The greatest danger to you my fellow Americans, is Joe Biden. He's destroying our economy. He's destroying our supply chain. He's destroying our energy system. He's destroying small business. He wants to tax you into oblivion. He wants your money. The only reason they want to raise taxes is so they can control you. So they can control what you earned. Inflation, he denies there's inflation. I ask you, is there inflation? We know that food prices have gone up 40% since the end of 2009. 40%. 40%. $100 in groceries 
in a grocery basket today is $140. He doesn't care. You're paying for the food that he puts in his big mouth. You always have. Or the communist Chinese have, one or the other. So Trump is a threat to democracy. Was he a threat to democracy when he was president for four years? There's not a single court order that he violated. None. Zero. They tried to take him out from day one. Russia collusion, planning stories, two phony impeachments, a criminal investigation. They came up with nothing because there was nothing. It is endless. But this is more than a war on Trump. It's a war on you. Listen to the way he says, MAGA, MAGA. Make America great again. MAGA, MAGA. He hates you. He despises you. He doesn't care. Israel goes under. Israel goes under. United States goes under. The United States goes under. Remember what I keep telling you. For a guy like Biden, it's party. Party matters most. Power, 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 power. Like these communist regimes. The country is nothing unless it's controlled by their power party, a monopoly party. That's what we have. A party that wants to change our election laws, and Schumer tries it every year right out of the box, <coughs> so they can't lose. And then they talk about voter suppression. The party of voter suppression talking about voter suppression. They have no respect for black people, none. With the kind of propaganda and rhetoric they use in black communities or focus on black individuals, it's grotesque. While he's Orbal Falba standing in the schoolhouse doorway preventing little black kids from getting the hell out of these lousy schools. He's the one stopping it. Because he doesn't believe in integration in our public schools. He said so. Oh, he's changed. No. A chameleon only changes for their own purposes. He's not changed. He's the same hateful bigot he's always been. First it was the blacks. Now it's the Jews. It's that simple. Democracy and freedom, the greatest threat is Trump. Who do you think our enemies are rooting for? China and Russia? Iran? North Korea? They're rooting for Biden. Who do you think the drug cartels are rooting for? They're rooting for Biden. They've never had it so good. Who do you think the communist regime in Cuba and Nicaragua and Venezuela, who do you think they're rooting for? Biden. Of course. Who do you think the prisoners, the criminals in our jailhouses across the country are rooting for? Biden. The American Marxists, the American Islamists, who are they rooting for? Biden. Biden. The Democrats always win. Dearborn a stand. Why is that? Why is that? It's called a rhetorical question. I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. My fellow Americans, we're living in very perilous economic times. Washington seems determined to bankrupt our nation with endless stimulus spending. As they devalue our dollar, hardworking Americans like you could lose everything. That's why I urge you strongly, register for the upcoming Gold and Silver Summit hosted by our friends at Advantage Gold. They'll teach you how to help guard your wealth using asset diversification into physical precious metals. Gold and silver can offer a defense against the dollar's devaluation, and the experts at Advantage Gold will explain how you can convert some of your savings into precious metals that can protect and potentially grow your wealth. With currency debasement from Washington and global uncertainty on the rise, gold and silver diversification could offer you some stability. Call 800-900-8000 right now to sign up. 800-900-8000 now. Tell them Mark Levin sent you. Performance may vary. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. You should always consult your financial and tax professional. So Nancy Pelosi, she's destroyed her city of San Francisco. She's helped destroy the state of California. She's at the point of the spear in destroying our country. Now she wants to destroy the state of Israel. Here she is on the morning, Joe. And Joe, I'm going to just tell you again how disappointed I am in you. How you allow this crap to be on your airwaves so you don't challenge it. What's happened to your moral core? And I'm quite serious about this. What the hell has happened to you? 
cut eight. Go. But Netanyahu, I mean, he's only interested in his own political survival. So, so this is amazing. He's only interested in his own political survival. Now, Joe Biden would sell the furniture in the White House if it meant getting reelected, because he's basically doing that. What do they mean Netanyahu is only interested in his political survival? He's defending his country. He's the commander in chief. He wants to get his people out of Hellland, Gaza. What do they mean he's only interested in his own political survival? You could see this heretic, this clown, this low IQ buffoon from San Francisco, Nancy Pelosi. He's never done a damn thing in her life other than run for office. You could see during World War II if she was a leftist in the British Parliament. Churchill only cares about getting reelected. That's all he cares about. She's a gnat on an elephant's ass. That's what she is. She's an irritant. She's an irritant. And she embraces now Hamas. She embraces the anti-Semites. She and Joe, two old bats. They see where the future of their party is. In fact, this is where they brought the future of their party. To this point. Go ahead. And that's just the way it's been. It's a tragedy. Ah, Ah, shut up. Put your false teeth back in your mouth. Keep that knot tied in the back of your head on the 412 facelifts that you've had. And whatever you do, whatever you do, don't leave Washington. Stay there to the very end because God knows the world needs Nancy Pelosi. Why is she still there? I'll tell you why. Because if she goes back home, San Francisco is a dangerous place. She'll just be another old homeless woman. That's it. It won't be your honor. It won't be, uh, ooh, there's Nancy Pelosi. She's got power. It'll be, oh, there's Nancy Pelosi. Get out of the way. I'll be right back. This segment of the podcast is exclusively sponsored by Pure Talk. Pure Talk offers great coverage and can save your family money on your wireless bill every single month. Go to puretalk.com to find the plan that's right for you. Thank you again for listening, and thank you so much for this sponsorship, Pure Talk. He's here. He's here. Now, broadcasting from from the underground command post, deep in the bowels of a hidden bunker, somewhere under the brick and steel of a nondescript building, we've once again made contact with our leader, Mark Levin. Hello, America. Mark Levin here. Our number, 877-381-3811, 877-381-3811. I want to thank you folks again. We were number one audience share Saturday night, prime time, 8 p.m. Eastern. And we were number one prime time, 8 p.m. Eastern on Sunday night. We always crush CNN and MSNBC. And you can see the amount of media attention that gets, which is zero. We don't really care about them. I'm just pointing it out. It's like having 10 books on the New York Times bestseller list and never once was a single one reviewed, including the last, I think I've had 11 books, whatever it is, the last uh, seven, which have been number one. It's unheard of. Absolutely unheard of. And these aren't comical books. These aren't, you know, mystery books. These are Straight out, solid books about liberty and tyranny, essentially, thanks to you. But I've always said if they reviewed it, they would just trash it anyway, so why do I care? In fact, why do I care about them at all? I don't. Mitch McConnell went to the Senate floor today, and I'm not going to ignore this. And he took on Biden and the Democrats. And I thought to myself, well, let's hear what he says, and then I'll tell you what I'm thinking. Cuts eight, six, and seven, Mr. Producer. Go. Iran's terrorist proxies in Gaza are responsible for the horrors of this war. Their hatred for Jews and refusal to acknowledge the existence of the Jewish state of Israel is the reason for this pain and suffering of the last six months. America cannot afford to lose moral clarity about the conflict. But I'm afraid that too many of our leaders are 
President Biden expressed outrage at last week's deadly accident, an event his own administration acknowledged was a tragic accident, which begs the question of whether he's also outraged at the way Israel's terrorist aggressors violate international law by turning hospitals and schools into fighting positions. <clears throat> Instead of welcoming Israel's swift investigation and efforts to hold personnel accountable for their mistakes, accountability that has been sorely lacking during President Biden's own administration, the president caved further to domestic political pressure. He indulged his radical base and called for an immediate ceasefire. He embraced an alternative an alternate reality in which ceasefire wasn't exactly the state of play that Hamas exploited on October 7th. A fantasy world in which leaving Hamas intact doesn't lead to further terrorism against Israelis and Palestinians alike. Unfortunately, the Democratic Party has become unmoored from a long tradition of bipartisan support for Israel. So kudos to Mitch McConnell. And here's my question, America. Why aren't all the other members of the Senate Republicans? I don't expect Democrats anymore. They've, they've made a decision. They've thrown in with Hamas and the terrorists in the Middle East. There's no question about it. I don't care what they say or how they phrase it. That's what they've done. Anything for power, and they know that'll get them the 10,000 votes they need out of Dearbornistan. But where are all the Republicans? There's some who've been solid, but why aren't each and every one of them every day going to the Senate floor condemning the Biden administration? Condemning the Biden administration for funding terrorism, for funding Iran, for funding UNRWA, if not directly, through the EU. Where are they? Where are they? Why aren't they making an issue out of this? Every day. In our own country, we now hear what the Islamists are saying about us. They want to destroy our country. They said it. I'm the one who put it on the social media platforms, mine. And it has spread like wildfire. But that's all well and good. We can shake our hands and point to it. But where are all the Republican senators? I see a buddy Tucker Carlson, Mr. Producer, who says, look at Bethlehem. It was a majority Christian, now it's 80% Christian. This is how the Israelis treat the Christians. This is how the Israelis treat the Christians. Oh yeah, they would have made sure that Bethlehem didn't become a majority Palestinian. Hebron has become a majority Palestinian. Other ancient towns have become majority Palestinian, not because of the Israelis kind of sickening, stupid propaganda is that? And I'm going to start calling it out more and more and more. Basically, it hasn't been on my radar. I haven't really paid attention. There's so many other Jew haters and anti-Semites and Israel haters out there. And what is her name? Oh, Candace Owens. There's another one. Candace Owens. It's about time we call out the Tucker Carlson's of the world and the Candace Owens of the world. What the hell are they thinking? What the hell are they thinking? Well, maybe they should explain themselves in more detail. So the Israelis wanted and didn't prevent Bethlehem from going majority Palestinian. That's what it was. It's Israel's fault. Israel did that. When you talk to Mike Huckabee, as I will this weekend on one of my programs, when you talk to Pastor Hagee, when you talk to hundreds, in fact, thousands of Christian leaders across the country, they will tell you, as I've spoke to dozens and dozens, that Israel has done everything it can to protect the Christian sites, including reveal them, digging them out from under the dirt, to point to them 
as historical ancient sites cited in the Bible. There's a reason why the vast majority of evangelical Christians support Israel and not terrorists. There's a reason for that. World's upside down, America. It truly is. You have sites like Mediaite that spend the vast majority of time trying to destroy Donald Trump. You have sites like Media Matters, which was given a life by George Soros, that spends the vast majority of its time trying to destroy Fox. They don't expose the anti-Semites, the Jew haters, in the media. In fact, they employ some of them. You won't find any of that on their sites. None of it. Now and then you might find a link to this memory site, but it's the very, very rare occasion. Instead, they prefer to put words in people's mouths. They don't need to interpret for us. They don't need to interpret for me. I'm on TV. I'm on radio. Not hiding anything. You can hear the whole thing I say in context without some prebubescent puke deciding what I or somebody else said. But they hate Trump more than they hate terrorists. They hate Bibi Netanyahu more than they hate the Islamo-Nazi leaders of these terrorist states. They mouth the Democrat Party line. That's what they do. That's what they do. Tell me, how many Christian historical sites have the Arabs protected? How many Christian historical sites have Muslims, like in Iran, protected? How many? None. None. What a bizarre allegation. What a bizarre allegation. All Israelis are not Jewish. Some of them are Druze. Some of them are Arabs. Some of them are actually Palestinians. And some of them are Christians living in a democracy called Israel. It would pay for some of these people to actually go over there and talk to them because they might be able to educate themselves. But maybe not. I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. Nowadays, 20 bucks barely gets you a burger and fries and maybe a quarter tank of gasoline. You know what it will get you, though? For just $20 a month, you can get unlimited talk, text, and plenty of 5G data from my cell phone company, Pure Talk. You'll get the same quality of service as AT&T, Verizon, or T-Mobile, but for half the cost. The average family saves almost $1,000 a year, all with no contracts and no activation fees. You can trade your phone or get great deals on the latest iPhones and Androids. Make the switch today and save an additional 50% off your first month. Choose a wireless company that shares our values, that supports our military and veterans, that creates American jobs, and refuses to advertise on fake news networks. Instead, they're right here with us. Just go to puretalk.com slash Levin, puretalk.com slash L-E-V-I-N, and make the switch right now so you can actually afford that burger and fries. That's puretalk.com slash Levin. N L E V I N. Mark Levin, the thunder on the right. Call in now, 877 381 3811. Well, we have our friend Jim Jordan on the program, chairman of the House Judiciary Committee. Congressman, how are you, sir? I'm fine, Mark. How are you doing, brother? I've been better. I've been better. I'm kind of sick, and I'm sick and tired of what's going on in this country. I'm be perfectly honest with you, Congressman. And uh, well, we pre- we appreciate you fighting. I, I, I watch the show and I listen to you, and I appreciate you fighting well, for liberty, you, fighting sir. for our dear and best friend, the state of Israel, and everything else. So, God bless you. Well, you're very, very kind. Now, what is going on with this FISA now in the House? Got to have a warrant requirement. Look, there's this big database of information that gets uh, that gets collected. I'm all for surveilling foreigners who want to do us harm. But when you do that, you inevitably pick up a number of Americans, many times innocently. And if you're going to go search that database, you got to go to a separate and equal branch of government and get a probable cause warrant. I mean, that is how it works, particularly when 
You're thinking about the FBI, the FBI who spied on the presidential campaign, the FBI who said if you're a parent going to a school board meeting, you need to be investigated, the FBI who said if you're a pro-life Catholic, you're an extremist, and the FBI, maybe most importantly, who retaliated against whistleblowers who came and gave us information about those subjects. Um, That FBI, it seems to me, if they're going to search and do what's called a U.S. person query, which is a fancy name for a search of a U.S. person, Mm-hmm. You got to go to a judge. You got to go to the court. We're even letting it be the FISA court. You got to go to the court and get a warrant. <clears throat> I mean, why the hell is this so controversial? That goes from the beginning of our country and even before. And yep. since this is the party and the administration that is no doubt letting terrorists into this country, why wouldn't they come into this country? The idea that you can't get a warrant. And, you know, there are ways to get quick warrants. There are ways to do it. But you yes, need a, you're right. Yes. You, need, you need a third branch. The idea that they won't do that. To protect, wasn't there some story I read, Congressman, that there were like three and a half million mistakes made when they were monitoring American citizens <laughs> and the FBI apologized? Remember that? Yeah. Well, there was actually 278,000 separate times they queried the database on U.S. persons and didn't follow their own rules. So now, look, there's there's a base text of this bill. We're trying to get the Warren Amendment onto it. The Warren Amendment, by the way, was on the bill that came out of the Judiciary Committee. It's been taken off the bill, and we have to insert it back in in this process. Well, the leadership, the leadership took it off. They said, no, you're going to to add it back in because the Intel Committee doesn't want it. But it was in the Judiciary Bill that came out of our committee 35 to 2. So you got Jerry Nadler and Jim Jordan agreeing that if you're going to go search U.S. person's information, Go get a warrant. But the, the, the FBI, 278,000 times. This is the Washington Post reporting this last May. 278,000 times didn't follow their own rules. So just putting more rules and regulations and audit requirements, and reporting requirements, and criminal penalties on the FBI that, that abused it 278,000 times and did all those other things we just talked about, that ain't enough. You got to go to a separate and equal branch of government to get a warrant. That's how our great system, the greatest system ever. But are you telling me, you know, the Constitution? That's how it works. Are you telling me? I don't want to put you on the spot. I can figure out the names. Are you telling me we have a committee, majority Republicans, that took the warrant provision out? Is that what you're telling me? No, I'm saying that uh, the the way this process was worked out, they want to go with the base text because Judiciary Committee was strongly for the warrant requirement I just described. Oh, by the way, Mark, we actually have exceptions in there. If there's an emergency situation, you can mm-hmm. you can go right and do the query. So we even I, and I'm actually a little nervous about that, but we were willing to do all that to help mm-hmm. protect Americans' freedom. We had that come out of our committee. That bill, Intel had a different bill that they did not have the warrant requirement on, and we're starting with the base text that makes us try to add the warrant requirement back into the legislation, which I think we got to win this amendment. It's supposed to be it's supposed to this whole debate supposed to happen, and the amendment will be offered on uh, it's supposed to happen on Thursday. We got to win this thing. We have a situation now, Congressman. If you and the American people don't win this debate that warrants that are based on probable cause against American citizens who've done nothing will not be used. There won't be any warrants. And yet, warrants that are used otherwise outside the system uh, are frequently used. And so, what is the problem? We use warrants to try and track down criminals. You can't go around the Constitution for that sort of thing. So why do you go around the Constitution because it's a so-called intelligence matter. None of us want to get blown up. That's not of the course. point. Of course. The point is you've got a ton of American citizens who are coming into the, uh, into the target who shouldn't be on anybody's list, let alone be targeted, right? right. Exactly right. You're, you're, the, the targets are foreigners, but inevitably American will you, – you could be calling someone – you're in the business world. You talk to someone in Germany – whose brother has been associated with someone in the government or someone who was on the, the, some terrorist list, and you get swept up into it. Or you talk to, you know, you're, you're in the oil and gas business. You talk to people in the Middle East who doing business, and you get swept up in And then they're going to go in this database, what I call this giant haystack of information. And they're not going to search on the foreigner and get any kind of communication they have with you. They're going to search your name or your phone number or your email address. Again, a U.S. person query. This is a term that they use in the intelligence community. They're searching a U.S. person. I'd like to know how many people they do that to. Yeah. What's the number? How, many, how, how, how often does that happen? And, oh, by the way, why not? If you're going to do that, go get a warrant. And we even have exceptions in the language. This seems to me so common sense, but... Um, 
I don't know. Well, let me ask you this. Let's hope we win. Let's say they uh, they do one of these things, and there's an American citizen talking about taxes. It's not that they're going to break the law, but they say, you know, I'm thinking about this with the tax code and so forth. Maybe I'll do that. In other words, the possibility of committing an offense. Can they sweep that up too and hand that to the criminal division? If in fact, if in fact you, uh, I think that would be tougher. But if you're talking with a foreigner who they're surveilling and you, you say certain things and you've just, by the fact you've talked to that uh, foreigner, you're now in the database. And so I'm saying if you want if you want to search the database without a warrant, you got to be it's got to be based on the foreigner. You got to be going after some someone who's not in not United States citizen, their phone number, their email address or their name. You can't say U.S. person. You can't go after a U.S. citizen and search based on their identifiers or their name mm-hmm. without a warrant. So what, so what happens now? Where is this stuck? What happens now? Well, we just had a great rules committee hearing. I thought our side uh, did a did a. It came across well for our side. Uh, the members of that committee asked some great questions. Uh, a number of members, I think, get the issue. Um, so we'll see. The rules committee first has to pass out a rule. Um, we want that warrant amendment made in order. We want it offered on the floor, and obviously, we want it to be adopted. We want it to win on the vote. Uh, I've, I've said I will not support this FISA reform, even though there's some some base reforms in there that are that I think are positive, that are good. It makes the FBI do certain things. But again, without the warrant requirement, I'm not going to support the reform. I'm not going to support no. the bill. And you shouldn't because they they've demonstrated their abuses of FISA. They used it against Trump. They've used it against, as you say, innocent citizens. The one thing, if they had a great record, they don't have a great record. And by the way, neither do the courts in Washington, D.C. They don't have a great record either. Nowadays, 20 bucks barely gets you a burger and fries and maybe a quarter tank of gasoline. You know what it will get you, though? For just $20 a month, you can get unlimited talk, text, and plenty of 5G data from my cell phone company, Pure Talk. You'll get the same quality of service as AT&T, Verizon, or T-Mobile, but for half the cost. The average family saves almost $1,000 a year, all with no contracts and no activation fees. You can trade your phone or get great deals on the latest iPhones and Androids. Make the switch today and save an additional 50% off your first month. Choose a wireless company that shares our values, that supports our military and veterans, that creates American jobs, and refuses to advertise on fake news networks. Instead, they're right here with us. Just go to puretalk.com slash Levin, puretalk.com slash L-E-V-I-N, and make the switch right now so you can actually afford that burger and fries. That's puretalk.com slash Levin. Then L E V I N. Liberty's voice. Mark Levin. Talk with that voice now. 877 381 3811. Jackie Heinrich, who is a fantastic reporter, and she's confronting Jean Pierre, who is a grifter, who's an idiot representing an idiot, who will say anything she's told to say, much like Admiral Kirby from the Good Ship Lollipop. So she says to Jean-Pierre, I mean, is Biden concerned about what's going on in Dearborn, Estan, Michigan? Cut 11, go. A couple days ago in Dearborn, there were protesters chanting death to America and death to Israel. Does the president condemn that? Yes. Is the president at all concerned that Dearborn is becoming, is facing a risk uh, of becoming a hotbed of any sort of homegrown threats? I, I, I don't have any uh, intelligence to share with you That's on that. That's for sure. She certainly doesn't. Go ahead. That we're always very vig- vigilant uh, about, but don't have any national intelligence to, to share with you. Mm-hmm. And then, but obviously, we will condemn any any uh, violent rhetoric. Yes. Which which we have been very. Well, I mean, you're hearing from me, right? You're asking me a question. I'm answering it, and we've been very vig- vigilant about, or very consistent about denouncing that type. You ever hear uh, such BS? What did What did Biden say, Mr. Producer? Not a word. And she only said what she said, one word, with two letters, after she was asked by Jackie Heinrich. They didn't put out a press release. They didn't make this a statement. He's out there attacking MAGA, MAGA this, and MAGA that, and MAGA this. What about his Islamists? That's his voter base. What about them? Do you condemn it? Yes. Why, you have to be asked? Biden hadn't said a damn thing. Not a word. That's good enough. 
that's good enough. It's like the 2020 summer of Democrat Party riots. Biden put out a very weak statement, a couple sentences, while his would-be vice president is bailing out rioters. While people like Mitt Romney are supporting BLM, which was founded by Marxists, and have as their goal to destroy our country and, of course, the state of Israel. There's Romney, boy, always in front of the curve, so, so courageous. So that's the best they can do, which is nothing. Nothing. But our friend Tom Cotton went at it a little bit with Lloyd Austin at a budget hearing today. Most of you are working for a living or you're doing other things, so I just want to bring this to your attention. Let's go to cut nine, Mr. Producer. Go. I want to address what the protesters raised earlier. Uh, is Israel committing genocide in Gaza? Uh, Senator Cotton, I'm... We don't have any evidence of genocide uh, being uh, created. Uh, so that's a, that's a no. Israel's not committing genocide in Gaza. Uh, we don't have evidence of that, to Thank my you. knowledge. Yeah. Better than Director Burns and Director Haynes did last year, last month at the Intelligence Committee when they dodged that question. Keep going. You talked a lot, Senator one. Reid, about Israel's responsibility to provide aid in Gaza. Why does Israel have a responsibility to provide aid to Gaza? Israel was the victim of an unprovoked, vicious attack on October 7th. Why should they provide aid to, their, to the aggressor nation? Or aggressor, uh, Gaza's not a nation, to the aggressors on October 7th. We didn't provide aid to Germany and Japan during World War II. Uh, what we, we did provide aid to uh, and assistance to many of the countries that we've operated in recently. As but not in World War II. If you had been in George Marshall's or Dwight Eisenhower's position in World War II, would you have wanted to provide aid to Germany? I, I, I really do believe, Senator, that if they want to create a, a lasting uh, effect and in terms of uh, stability, then I think that uh, something needs to be done to account uh, to, to help uh, the, the Palestinian people. I get, and, I, I get that, but they're in the middle of the war. Like we, we believe that, too, after World War II. That's why we had the Marshall Plan. That's why we rebuilt Japan. But that was after the war was won, not in the middle of it. And in the meantime, like if it's, it's not Israel's responsibility to provide aid, it's certainly not our responsibility, but we're spending t- our tax dollars to build this giant pier to send aid into Gaza. Who's going to accept that aid? Who's going to be at the end of the pier on the shore taking aid from American forces? It, that's, that's still uh, being worked out, but there, there will be uh, uh, NGOs that, uh, that, that will help to distribute that but aid. Not, uh, that, Hamas is in charge of Gaza. When aid goes to Gaza, Hamas doesn't divert it or commandeer it or steal it. It accepts it. And anybody operating in Gaza is under the thumb of Hamas. I just think it's very ill-considered, and I don't think it's going to end very well. Yes, but everything Biden touches turns to crap. Just remember Afghanistan and those two generals who testified about a month ago. Mealy and McKenzie, and they pointed their fingers at Biden, and they pointed their fingers at Blinken. And I'm certain that Benjamin Netanyahu is sort of the Churchill of our time. He knows this too. He knows this too. And he knows that if he, in fact, buckles to Biden and Nancy Pelosi and this Chris Van Hollen, who's a real pig. Mr. Producer, invite Chris Mass. Van Hollen on the program, would you? I'm sure he'll come on with bells on. Just saying that I want to pursue his his views of the Middle East and Gaza and the Israelis with him. I'd love to do that. Um, so we'll see if he'll agree. We can't get any. We can't get Kirby on here. Can't get any of them, of course. And in truth, if you were them, would you want to come on here? No. Because I actually know what I'm talking about. But he didn't say no when it came to the issue of genocide. I'm not aware of it. I don't have any information on that, not to my knowledge. Because what's going through his head is, I don't want to undermine Biden and Blinken and their character assassinating of Israel. I want to talk to you folks from my heart for a minute, as the mind works as well. Please do not. 
be persuaded by Svengali's. By individuals. Whether the Democrat Party, the Republican Party, whether the conservative, or whatever they are. Who are piling on. Like that's some kind of a moral imperative. Do not be persuaded. I want you to step back now. Step, step back. Those of you who are middle aged or older for most of your lives, you've heard about World War II, you've heard about these concentration camps, you've heard about this. And many of you wondered, Jew or non Jew, how the hell could this happen? How could the media cover it up? How could the so-called America First of the 1930s, I'm not talking about today, the America First movement back then refused to even come to the defense of Great Britain, our closest friend? Lindbergh famously said, Britain's gone, there's nothing we can do about it. And then, of course, we were attacked by the Axis. We were attacked by Japan. Not going to leave us alone. You heard what they said in Dearborn, Michigan. What the hell is it going to take for people to wake up? So anybody who gives any aid and comfort to these movements that hate America, to these movements that hate the state of Israel, they're attacking Judeo-Christian beliefs. They're attacking Western Enlightenment. That doesn't mean you have to be Jewish or Christian, obviously. You can be whatever you are. It's not the point. Hindu, Buddhist, yes, Muslim. Many fine citizens in this country. Fantastic people. Many of them in our military. Many of them serving as police officers. I'm not talking about them. They're patriots. Like all patriots. Everybody knows exactly what I'm talking about. So when you have people who who increasingly are on the fringe. What do we have to do with this? We have everything to do with this. Or one day we're going to look around and we don't have any allies. And we're surrounded. Then what are we going to do? What are we going to do when Iran gets a nuclear weapon? Because they're going to get one under Biden. Right after the election is my prediction. What happens when hit squads are sent to the United States and they blow up our towers in New York? They attack our Pentagon. What then? We're hollowing out our military. We're teaching our children to hate their parents and their country. We have the lowest level of military preparedness since before World War II. With a wide open border, the Israelis didn't do this. We're doing this. With enemies who are populating our country, whether they're from communist China, other parts of the world where they're sending people in, just a matter of time, as we all know. Of course the enemy is going to be sending people in. Why the hell wouldn't they? We're inviting them. We have an administration, a.k.a. regime, It's almost unimaginable that it's purposely doing this to our country. Purposely. Because they've bought into the Marxist-Islamist ideology. And they're taking our country down. Joe Biden seems like a very bizarre person to be leading this movement, but he's not leading the movement. He's got the power of the presidency. He's too stupid to lead the movement. He was much more comfortable with the racist senators because he understood that very easily. This is a little more complicated, but his knee jerks in the direction of bigotry. That's what it does. Joe Biden, all his years in Washington, D.C., hasn't done a damn thing for liberty. He hasn't done a damn thing to defend the Constitution, can pass all the legislation he wants. He's the Orville Faubus of our time, standing in the schoolhouse door to prevent little black kids from going to schools that actually work. He takes no criticism from this. None. The slavery of mostly brown and black people, but not exclusively on the southern border, which is horrendous. Go ahead and try and find the numbers. 
How many women have been sold into sex slavery? They don't have a number. How about children? No number. How about into pornography? No number. Where are the 85,000 children the New York Times wrote about that this administration lost track of? Nobody knows. Maybe it's 150,000 by now. What's the problem? But it's the Republicans' fault. And the greatest friend of Israel to ever serve in the Oval Office is Hitler. And the party that gives pardons to actual terrorists, including terrorists who attacked, shot members of the House of Representatives, they want you to believe January 6th was an insurrection. It was ugly. It was no damn insurrection. Even Jack Smith has charged Donald Trump with that. But there's insurrections and there's insurrections. Joe Biden's destroying the nation from within. That's an insurrection. I don't care about the legal definition. It certainly is the philosophical definition. Don't be persuaded. Don't be persuaded by the anti-Semites, the so-called pro-American types. They're not pro-American any more than any more than they are in Dearbornistan. Those people who met in that hall and said the things that they said. I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. Nowadays, 20 bucks barely gets you a burger and fries and maybe a quarter tank of gasoline. You know what it will get you, though? For just $20 a month, you can get unlimited talk, text, and plenty of 5G data from my cell phone company, Pure Talk. You'll get the same quality of service as AT&T, Verizon, or T-Mobile, but for half the cost. The average family saves almost $1,000 a year, all with no contracts and no activation fees. You can trade your phone or get great deals on the latest iPhones and Androids. Make the switch today and save an additional 50% off your first month. Choose a wireless company that shares our values, that supports our military and veterans, that creates American jobs, and refuses to advertise on fake news networks. Instead, they're right here with us. Just go to puretalk.com slash Levin, puretalk.com slash L-E-V-I-N, and make the switch right now so you can actually afford that burger and fries. That's puretalk.com slash Levin. N L E V I N. It's amazing what goes on in this country. It's amazing who's behind it, who's involved in it. When we come back, we do have a guest in our third hour, a very fine guest, Claudia Tenney, who is a fantastic congresswoman from New York, and of course they tried to steal the election from her. But I also want to talk about this issue of abortion. I want to circle back about Donald Trump's statement and how people are perverting it, including Biden, but others as well. I'll be right back. He's here. He's here. Now, broadcasting from the underground command post, deep in the bowels of a hidden bunker, somewhere under the brick and steel of a nondescript building, we've once again made contact with our leader, Mark Levin. Hello, America. Mark Levin here. Our number, 877-381-3811. 877-381-3811. Okay. Abortion. First, let's be clear about what Biden and the Democrat Party stands for. They literally stand for infanticide. No limits on abortion. How do we know? Because as soon as the Dodd decision was leaked, and shortly thereafter, the Democrats came up with their own bill. And that bill would have eviscerated virtually every single, every single medical or other provision in state law even waiting periods. It would have eliminated states that prevent abortions up to the last second. And we remember Governor Norton from Virginia who made it abundantly clear that if you had a quote-unquote botched abortion and the baby is born and they're on that that cold metal table, whether or not a doctor should save that baby's life. The Democrat Party has not changed from that position. They have a cult of death. And the reason they have a cult of death is they don't care about citizens. 
who are fully formed, fully born, who are on the southern border. And they don't care about the migrants coming in, the brown and black people, and the kind of treatment they're getting. They don't care about the crime in the streets, what's taking place. And if you ask science, the real science, there is no dispute, none, that that is a person, not a thing, not a choice. But we've lost our moral clarity in this country. I fully understand that. And we don't control the bureaucracy, and we don't control the media, and we don't control the decision making. So you have to fight where you can to protect as many people, that is babies, as you can. Which means if you fight for the whole, the whole decision, you're going to lose. That is, if you fight for abortion or on conception to eliminate abortion, you're going to lose. We are a republic. And two-thirds of the people don't believe that. We don't control the courts. We don't control the federal judiciary. We also have a constitution that we have to honor. How do we make these decisions? Who makes the decisions? Who's responsible? The Supreme Court did what we've asked the Supreme Court to do for over half a century. It overruled Roe v. Wade. We never thought it would happen, and it happened. So where are we? We're where we are before Roe v. Wade was imposed on the nation, every corner of the nation, by a majority of Supreme Court justices who perverted the law who lied about what the Constitution said. And everybody knew it, including Ruth Bader Ginsburg. And it's divided this country horribly. The issue still divides this country. And the more secularist we become as a country, the worse it gets for people like me who believe, who oppose abortion. Now all that said, there's a lot of misinformation going around by good people and bad people alike. First of all, the Supreme Court said, it's not for us, the court, and it's not for the federal government to make holy state decisions when it comes to abortion. Health and safety issues are state issues. Quote-unquote reproductive health are state issues. It's not for nine justices to make that decision. Or any other federal entity to make that decision. That's number one. And they were right. Number two, for those who say there's no federal role at all, you're almost right. But you're not completely right. You've heard of interstate and foreign commerce. That is a federal area of responsibility, not a state area. Interstate commerce. The federal partial birth abortion statute is limited to interstate and foreign commerce. Because that's where the federal government has an interest. Not the states. And so partial birth abortion can be outlawed by the federal government if there's an interstate or foreign commerce connection. Number one. Number two. On federal lands, on military bases, as an example, the federal government has plenary control. Again, it can prevent abortions from occurring on federal land. But the federal government is limited to these areas of sole federal authority, plenary authority. An interstate connection, a federal base, a federal facility. But that's it. Now, those who argue for a federal ban on abortion, whether it's immediate, whether it's 15 weeks or whatever, like Lindsey Graham and others, I hate to tell you this, that is a very dangerous argument. We don't control the federal government. When we do, it's 
for a very limited period of time. They control the bureaucracy, the federal Leviathan. We call it the administrative state. We call it the swamp. They control it. They build it with the help of some Republicans, but they own it. They protect it. They fund it. They increase their numbers. We, you and I, we don't control that. That's number one. Number two, we don't elect Republicans, particularly to the presidency, who are going to take courageous stands on things like this. Lindsey Graham says he disagrees with Donald Trump's statement. But Lindsey Graham's been in Congress forever. He's been in the House. He's been in the Senate. Has he made any progress? Absolutely none. Zero. He's made no progress. Under Republican presidents, Democrat presidents, Republican Senates, Democrat Senates, Republican Houses, Democrat House, no progress whatsoever. None. So what makes anybody think he'd make progress now? He wouldn't. And then thirdly, It amazes me that lawyers don't get this. The Supreme Court has ruled, and except for the cases that I mentioned to you, there is no federal role. It's only a state role. Again, the status quo before Roe v. Wade, but we all asked for that status quo, and we got it. And we got it. Now, that doesn't mean you can't litigate within a state. You look at the constitution of a state, even a blue state, doesn't mean you'll win, but it doesn't mean you can't challenge it. Make them define what a human being is. Make them, make them argue equal protection doesn't apply to a little baby that's about to get born. Put them on their heels, go on the offensive. And spend the time and money trying to convey to the public what a partial birth abortion actually looks like. What it actually is. It is the torture of an innocent, defenseless human being in the womb before delivery. It is taking a needle, a syringe, perhaps 12 inches long, and shoving it into the soft part of the top of the head of the baby and sucking their brains out. And then turning it around in the womb and pulling it out by the feet. I wonder what that baby looks like when that baby is removed from the womb. We should fight. Fight to make that procedure viewable by the American people. So the American people know what the Democrats mean by a choice. And the overwhelming majority of the American people don't go there. They don't support what the Democrats support. The fact that Republicans are unable to walk and chew gum is part of the problem. They should be immediately going on offense that the Democrat Party wants partial birth abortion in every corner of this country. Without, without exception. They don't even want parental notification. They don't want a parent knowing that their 11, 10-year-old child is pregnant or having an abortion. That was part of their proposed statute. America wants parental choice. America wants parental notification. There's many things that Americans want that we stand for. Explain it! Explain it. Partial birth abortion. When you vote Democrat, that's what you're voting for. Make them explain themselves. And I'm quite serious about this. I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. Claudia Tenney is a real fighter. She fought the attempt to steal her congressional seat by a Democrat judge and Mark Elias, and she succeeded. We remember that well here on the program. Um, she has a very patriotic family, including veterans. Uh, she represents a rural part of New York. And Claudia Tenney, before I get to this anti-BDS labeling act, which is outrageous, what Biden's trying to do, Jake Sullivan, the so-called national security advisor today, announced that the United States opposes, opposes Netanyahu and Israel going into Rafah and wiping out Hamas. They don't have a credible plan, he said, for protecting the 1.2 million 
Gazan citizens. They just bought 40,000 tents. He said, we're not happy with the effort to provide food and other um, material to the Gazans, where they provided tons and tons of tons of food. 70% of it's been stolen by Hamas. What are we dealing with here? Hello? Hello? The, yes, Hi, what, are we, is, what are we dealing with here in the Biden Hi, administration? A, thank you so much. Uh, it's such an honor to be on. Look, I, we are dealing with people who are obsessed with politics and obsessed with winning a political race because of everything that happens in one congressional district in Dearborn, Michigan, which could affect the presidential race, which could actually throw this race to President Trump away from the feckless, disastrous uh, non-leadership of, of President Joe Biden right now. And that's what it's all about. It's all about politics. It doesn't ma- they don't matter. It doesn't matter to the Democrats that Israel is a longtime ally, friend, the only democratic uh, country in the Middle East that is standing up as the, the front against Islamic uh, extremism in the Middle East and, and our true ally. And it's really all about politics. It has nothing to do with policy. So Joe Biden's desperate to get five or 10,000 votes out of Dearborn, Michigan. You saw that video, I'm sure, the other day, where we have a significant, really, number of individuals who hate America, who hate Israel. You've got imams, you have others. Uh, Talib represents this, this part of her district, obviously. And so Joe Biden will do anything, including watch the Israelis suffer, watch the Israelis effectively defeat it, and a massive propaganda victory to the terrorists? I mean, who does he think knocked down those buildings in New York City and attacked the Pentagon on 9-11? The, I mean, they're, they're aiming for us, too. I don't think they care. As I said, this, this administration is all about power at all costs, nonstop. Uh, they do not understand uh, how, how this situation is so fragile. And you cited my, my, my really challenging run in 2020 during the pandemic election, it's all about getting votes, and in, in, in the presidential race in 2020 was decided by about 42,000 votes. And those 10,000 votes that might matter in Dearborn, Michigan, where President Obama allowed all these refugees in who became citizens, who are now talking about death to Israel, death to America in open forums, not being charged with anything, an FBI that's turning, and a CIA, and an administrative state that's turning its back on it for pure political reasons. Do not care if those innocent people in Israel are slaughtered if, or, or are these hostages who we don't know the fate of them, how many of them are surviving. This is a diabolical regime that cares about nothing but power and maintaining the presidency to destroy our republic, to take away our self-governance that we have. That is all that's left to stand up against this authoritarianism around the world. It is really it is really the most dangering, dangerous times that I can I, I can't see anything worse. Uh, I think this is equivalent to World War II. I think it's equivalent to the Civil War. This is a, a, a battle that the United States faces that is of such consequence that I hope the American people understand. It's why I am so committed to telling the truth about what's happening in Israel, uh, why, why I'm taking a stand on all these issues. And as you cited, Mark, and you are truly the great one, I come from a rural district in upstate New York. There are very few Jewish people in my district, but we understand deeply how important Israel is to our world and to our nation. And we've got to start telling the truth, the disinformation, the absolute uh, disgust that we're seeing in our our communities. Look, Cornell University is not in my district, but it's right next door. I was the first person to come out and stand up and write a letter to the president of, of Cornell University demanding the firing of the the professor who stood out with students and said that that this was exhilarating and and a great experience when Hamas went in and destroyed and killed and murdered innocent people in Gaza. And yet, you know, we still haven't gotten this professor. We got him suspended. We haven't had him uh, removed uh, as a professor yet and, and without pay. But this is just a small thing. This is what's been going on in our country. And you point this out. This is becoming real, and Israel is the focal point right now, and they are becoming the scapegoat. They're using Netanyahu as a scapegoat. Uh, They're trying to blame things on him. This administration does not care about anyone but getting raw power and winning the election. 
in November. They don't care about anybody in my district. They don't care about anything except power and control. And Claudia Tenney, if they cared about citizens, we have the worst level of slavery on that border than we've had since the end of World War, excuse me, the end of the Civil War. I mean, Joe Biden's the biggest slaver in American history. I mean, sex slaves, children's slaves, labor slaves, mostly people of color. And he doesn't give a damn. That border stays wide, wide open. And he can shut it if he wants to. He doesn't give a damn about all the crime in our streets. I mean, if he actually cared about citizens, he doesn't even care about American citizens. If he does, he has a funny way of showing it, no? No, absolutely. And I represent most of the northern border of New York, all around Lake Ontario, up into the Swanton sector, up in uh, where we have 85% of the people on the terror watch list are coming across the northern border because they can come into the United States, come to New York, where we have a one-party rule Marxist regime, basically, who celebrate Karl Marx. Most of them do. The largest caucus in the New York State Legislature is the Democratic Socialists of America. They give licenses, privilege, privileges, a license, a New York State valid license to illegal immigrants, and they also give special protections and rights to illegal immigrants. And this is the same state, the same state that had the worst uh, terrorist attack on our nation in 9-11, not that long ago, and it, it's, it's how quickly they've forgotten. And we have allowed this to happen in our northern border. It is very easy to come across the northern border uh, in, from Canada into the United States. And these people can go anywhere in the United States with their valid New York driver's license, even though they may be illegal immigrants, human traffickers, drug traffickers. It's all the same. They're all people allowed in by Joe Biden and our government in Albany, which is hurting New York State. We're talking with Representative Claudia Tenney, who is a fantastic member of Congress. And we're going to get back with her because Joe Biden's doing something that's reminiscent of the Third Reich. He wants to put, well, I'll explain it when we return. We'll be right back. Mark Levin, the great one. The great one, Mark Levin. Dial in now, 877-381-3811. Not even the great big one anymore, Mr. Bruce. I've lost like 30 pounds. you believe that? Five of them I didn't want to lose. I got sick, but here I am. We're here with the great representative, Claudia Tenney, of uh, rural New York. Now, no offense, Congresswoman, but mosquitoes bite me. I swell up. It just gets really terrible. And you've got mosquitoes in your district the size of bald eagles. Do you know what I'm saying? We don't have that many mosquitoes. Remember, we have the beautiful uh, Lake Ontario. We have all the Finger Lakes, and we don't have any sharks or salt water. No mosquitoes, huh? I live on the lake. I live on a beautiful, I see the sunrise and the sunset from the north shore of Oneida Lake. It's absolutely spectacular every day. Well, maybe I'm confusing your district with uh, Lee Stefanics. You never know. Um, Uh, Yes, she has the black flies over in the... Is that what those uh, damn things are? We don't have the black flies. Yes. We don't have the black flies. Yes, we don't. You don't. You need. You need netting to survive up there until July. Let me we just say this: that. I love nature, but I want nothing to do with it. You get my drift. Anyway, here we are, <laughs> Claudia Tenney. You are pushing an anti BDS labeling app because the Biden administration wants to label anything that comes out of Judea and Samaria, which now is labeled as a product of Israel under the Trump administration. They want to remove that, label it as something out of the quote-unquote occupied territories or something like that because they really want to destroy the people, the lifestyle, really the ancestral home of the Jews in that part of Israel. Isn't that the goal here and you're trying to push back? Yes. I mean, look at, Mark, we're trying to get at the truth. The the people need to know the truth. Our college students need to know the truth. Our students need to know the truth. I had the wonderful opportunity to travel to Judea and Samaria Uh, It was an amazing trip to visit uh, Rabbi Jeremy Gimple, actually, and his family, and what what the so-called settlement, a beautiful retreat, settled right where you could see Jerusalem at one end and the Dead Sea at the other, uh, with a group uh, known as the National Council of Young Israel with Dr. Joseph Frager, Mike Huckabee. It was a beautiful, beautiful event to go us to go be there and see this important part of the world, this historic land of the Jews, and why, how, how suddenly... We have, you know, become a country that is going to erase, to cancel, to eliminate the Jewish people and the Jewish culture. So I introduced the bill. Actually, I drafted the bill last summer, uh, and it's Recognizing Judea and Samaria Act. 
And now more than ever, we need that act. And we're going to actually introduce it in October 7th happened, and so much, was, so much was so uncertain. But now I think more than ever, we need to tell the truth about the history of Israel and how important it is to recognize the heritage of the Jewish people and the importance of this part of the world and why it's a symbol of peace for people and why we need to talk about that. And that's why I introduced the bill. I've got a couple of sponsors, uh, Anthony D'Esposito from Long Island, Randy Weber from Texas, I'm hoping to get more members. I'd love to get some Democrats to join me on this bill just to recognize how important and historic this is. When they erase our culture, which is what they're trying to do in the United States, and they erase the culture of the Jewish people and the Israelis, that's when we lose everything. And that's where we need to restore it. And I'm willing to stand in the breach and stand up for Israel and stand up for the heritage and the culture. And most of all, Mark, the truth. This is the truth. We need to talk about the truth and not be afraid of it, because that is what's going to set us on the right path to getting us back to our, our self-governance, our republic, uh, our allies, like, uh, like our only ally, really, our only de- democratic uh, country in the entire Middle East that's standing up against Islamic terrorism. And yes, we have some opportunities. We have the historic Abraham Accords uh, that President Trump signed into law, that, which were so important to bringing normalization and peace to the Middle East with a very novel approach. Those things have to be revered. And this administration is so vile and Mm. so evil that they are trying to erase all of this, all of this that was bringing us progress, peace in the Middle East, not just in Israel, but for all these other countries that joined on to the Abraham Accords. And we were on the cusp of bringing Saudi Arabia into this normalization agreement, wanting to work with Israel to bring this prosperity for everyone in the Middle East, regardless of your religious, uh, religious, uh, you know, uh, uh, Ben, it was all about peace and prosperity for everyone in this region of the world for once. And it's all being erased by Blinken, Mali, uh, Biden, you know, the ignoramus who's in the White House, who I, I really think mm-hmm. it's, it's the Obama administration and operatives mm-hmm. behind running the shadow government. But I mean, that's just me being editorial, editorializing here, but no. I think you know that. Well, look, uh, Blinken was Obama's deputy secretary of state. Um, they're funding Iran. They gave more money to Iran than they've given to Ukraine, and nobody even talks about this. It's amazing. They've given 30 to 40 times more money, directly and indirectly, to Iran than to Israel. And, you know, I've said on this program before, even Neville Chamberlain didn't actually fund the Nazis. He appeased them. But we have a president here that not only appeases the modern-day Nazis, but he funds them. And these are people yeah, who attack the United point. States, as you point out. Attack New York City, attack the Pentagon. People, by this, I mean the Islamist terrorists. It's a, I mean, and the media go along with it, Congressman. It's, it's, it's shocking to me. Now, so you're going to propose this bill that basically says, no, those are products of the state of Israel, and no, you're not to target these individuals like this is uh, Germany in the 1930s and 40s. And, you, and commentators have said, what's next? We're going to have these people wear yellow stars so we can identify the quote-unquote settlers. How many settlers are there in indigenous areas? Do we call Native American settlers of their own territory? These are indigenous peoples, right? Absolutely. And under, actually, you know what, Mark, this under the Oslo Accords, Israel was granted full military and civilian control over Judea and Samaria. And this is something that put, was put forth by the, Biden, or the Trump administration, Secretary Pompeo. We stood up on the Golan Heights. We actually brought sense to this region, and we actually started seeing it a, a potential for peace. All of this has been reversed and has put us in a grave position. And, and this is all the, the, the handiwork of the Rob Malleys, who is uh, you know, out there trying to imp- appease Iran, who is, by the way, putting a thorn in the side of every country in the Middle East. None of these countries, whether it's Saudi Arabia, uh, whether it's even Qatar and Jordan, all these countries, they are all being hurt by the malicious actions and the malicious behavior of the Iran regime that is actually funding this. And yet the Biden administration continues to appease, continues to give, relieve the sanctions so they can spend over $100 billion on selling oil and gas to the Chinese, and that money is now going into the proxies, the Houthis, uh, Islamic Jihad, Hezbollah, which is threatening Israel from the north. And then we have the gall to go in and tell Israel that they can't defend themselves against these people who are trying to eliminate them from the face of the earth. And you watch these horrific videos of people who are American citizens 
in Dearborn, Michigan, mm-hmm. brought in as refugees by the, by the Obama administration, talking about, in our country, in the United States of America, death to America and death to Israel. These people are in, 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 in our country, and yet mm-hmm. we are seeing that these people are being, you know, okay, fine, you have free speech, great. But they're talking about death, death to our own people, our own country, mm-hmm. our own allies. When is this okay? Well, let me ask you a question. Why hasn't Joe Biden spoken out against this? He waits and waits. He has his spokes idiot at the White House, uses a, uh, a two-letter word. No, we don't support. No. Uh, excuse me. That's the best you can do. And this is going on all over the place. We have these little crystal knocks taking place with temples and, and at colleges and universities. This, Joe Biden is silent about it. He gives his State of the Union speech, says nothing about rampant anti-Semitism. Let me ask you a question. You've been following this very, very closely. When an administration conducts itself this way, that is publicly trying to undermine the elected government of Israel, that is accusing Israelis of a blood libel, of purposely attacking citizens and all this other stuff, doesn't that feed into the narrative of the Dearborn Michigan and the Marxist anti-Semites and the spread of anti-Semitism in this country? Aren't they lighting a fire under this? Well, absolutely, Mark. And this is the, this is this rampant anti-Semitism is not come out of nowhere. This is tens of billions, well, probably a billion, hundreds of millions of dollars in money from Hamas, fed through uh, dark money operations uh, through this country to manipulate our college campuses, individuals, people in, uh, all across America, not understand what's really going on. And this administration, I don't really believe Joe Biden knows what's going on. I think Joe Biden reminds me of the decrepit Soviet leaders, an Andropov that's set up by, as you say, a Marxist regime. He's just out there because the media for 50 years has spread this false narrative of this talentless, uh, corrupt guy that's now the president. The Democrats didn't know what to do with him. They got stuck with him because, you know, he had this false narrative protected by the media Oh, this is just good old Joe's riding the subway into the into D.C. You know, all of that. This is the guy that that turned our justice system around when it attacked uh, Justice Bork, Justice Thomas, went, used and weaponized our system long before he even got into in the president, failed presidencies. And now we have they're stuck with them and the Democrats are going to ride that that uh, wave all the way in. And then here we have this guy who I don't think really makes the calls the shots. I think it's probably the shadow government with a lot of the Obama operatives behind the scene. And they don't care about America. They care about this globalist ideal of eviscerating America, eviscerating Israel, taking away our rights. And I feel like that's what we've got. And yet this guy walks around and it's embarrassing to the United States. It's embarrassing and people know it. Uh, But we've got to get our people informed there. There's such decentralized media. Uh, We've got to get people understanding what the truth is. That's one of the reasons I came out with the Judea, uh, Judea, Recognizing Judea and Samaria Act. It's why I'm standing up on this terrible BDS movement, the boycott, divest, and sanction movement against Israel. We've got to start talking about the truth so that the American people can make that bright line distinction between what is manipulation by whether it's Hamas and their operatives and their money being flooded into our, our United States, or between what's really happening and what's, what, what's really happening with the American people. I think they're starting to see it. They're starting to see that Joe Biden is a fraud, that Joe Biden is just a prop, and that these people are really trying to take over our country. And I just hope that we get more Americans recognize it. It's why if you go to tenny.house.gov, I am the only member of Congress that explains every vote that I take on the House floor. I don't just say yes or no. I explain it all, trying to be transparent. I want to make sure that my constituents are self-governing. It's why I have so many followers. They look to my votes to understand what's going on with government. If we don't have people that understand our system and understand how important and how precious our republic is and how important it is to save self-governance, we're not going to have our government anymore. And that's why I do it. It's why I stand up for the truth. And that's why I love you, Mark. You do such an amazing job. I love listening to your show. You're fantastic. You, you, wow. you really set the diff- You really clear the field when it comes to telling the truth about what's going on, because we have a lot of fakers out there. We have a lot of people out there that are monetizing their position in the media and in Congress, and we need to tell the truth. We need to save this country. And I'm so grateful to you for everything you do. Well, and you and your family are great, great patriots. Now, if people want to help you in your election, where do they go? 
it's Claudia for Congress.com. I'm the only Claudia so far elected to Congress, uh, but Claudia for Congress.com. Uh, please follow us. Please follow. We do a newsletter every week. I do an annual report. I'm the only member that does an annual report. I run our, used to run our small business. I was a lawyer. Uh, I practiced law. Uh, really just want to save our country, want to save New York. I think You're we have the most amazing. Yeah, I, my, you know, my, dad was a, my dad was a Supreme Court judge in New York. My son's a Marine. Uh, my family cares. We love our country. We want to save our country. But I'm not different than anyone else. We are so many wonderful people out there in this country that feel the same way. Well, I'm going to have to slip away here, Congressman, but I want to have you back. You're, you're unique. You're very rare. You're, you're really quite fabulous. And, Mr. Producer, I want you to put both those links to her official site so people can follow her information and to her campaign as well. And I hope as many of you as possible, you don't have to be in New York, will support her campaign because they're gunning for her, too. They gun for all the good ones. Thank you, Congresswoman, very, very much. Thank you so much. I really appreciate all that you do in your show. You're fantastic. And uh, thank you for saving America. I really appreciate it. Well, time will tell. But God bless you and thank you. She great. I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. We don't have a lot of time left, Mr. Producer. Do we have one caller that I should go to? Just one? Yeah. WABC, Bobby and Queens. Go right ahead quickly, please. Quickly, uh, Joe is a chameleon. He's playing both ends of the fire. He's a capitalist for his family and then making millions and, <laughs> and ripping us off for 40 years. That's and he's point. the other way socialist and he's pandering to them. So until America wakes up, we're going to be in this nightmare. You make a great point. Joe's a capitalist for himself. When it comes to everybody else, he's a socialist. Redistribute the wealth. Thank you for your call, brother. We salute our armed forces, police officers, firefighters, emergency personnel. We salute our truckers, freedom fighters all over the world. Our brothers and sisters in Ukraine. We want the people of Israel to know we have their back. And most of all, red-blooded American citizens, God bless you. And I'll see you tomorrow.